So if you've invested in any personal development courses or attend any masterminds, you've noticed that they almost always start with the mindset. Why is that so important? Because no matter how good the information is that you have, if your mindset will not allow you to absorb it, you will not have any realized change in your life. You have to have an alignment with your mindset and that with the content you're consuming. There are people, and you know people in your life who have all the answers they need, but they simply refuse to take action on it. Why? Because their mindset is broken. So that will not be the case with you. In this module, we're going to discuss winning, the nature of winning, how to get more wins, and more importantly, how to behave once you start winning. We're going to cover something known as the infinite game and what the Romans called the Rota Fortune. Also, the psychology behind creation, Tim Ferriss' four-hour work week, and an exercise you can use to really get started with your wins right away, and the 12 natural laws of the universe. So by the end of this module, you should develop a stronger appreciation for creation and the effects it has on your community and your psyche. Creation in and of itself is what I personally believe is what makes us as human beings distinct from beasts. A horse today will be doing the exact same thing a horse 5,000 years from now will be doing and is going to do the exact same thing a horse 300 years ago has done. What makes us distinct as humans is that I believe we have a divine providence, a divine spark within us that makes us very hungry to innovate and to create, make things new. And so you'll realize as we go through this, the more you step into your creator role, your creator self, the more likely it is that your wins will pile up and pile up and pile up. So let's discuss the actual frameworks and tools necessary to identify and implement creative time into your life. So the infinite game. This is an idea that's been discussed for hundreds of years, if not longer, but has been recently made popular by Alex Hermosi. So what the infinite game theory is, is that People are applying finite rules to infinite games, and then they wonder why they're not winning. Meaning, there are certain games in life that have no end, that the purpose in and of itself of the game is to keep playing, and that will give you the rewards you're looking for. Let's look at some examples. Marriage. Marriage is an example of an infinite game. You don't win at marriage. The whole point of marriage is to stay married, and you don't win at business either. The whole point of business is to stay in business. And fitness, you don't win at fitness. The whole point of fitness is to stay fit. So of course there are finite games out there, like in academics, you wanna graduate from high school or graduate from college if that's for you. There are certain paths in life that are very finite and it's very clear what those paths are, but that does not apply to every game out there in the world. And one could argue that the games that matter the most are the infinite games because those are the ones that you have to continuously provide effort knowing that it will never end. You're doing it for the love of it. And this idea of continuously putting in effort, whether th there are ups or downs, is something that the Romans discussed in something they called the Rota Fortune or Fortune's Wheel. So look at these Renaissance Middle Age paintings and depictions of the Rota Fortune, Fortune's Wheel. You'll notice that at the top you have a king and that same king, before he was a king, he was going through hard times. Maybe he was a pauper even and way at the bottom, he's really suffering. But if you notice carefully, every person is represented by this depiction. You are at the top and when you're at the top, enjoy it, but also do not be surprised that things will come your way that will make you come back down, that will force you back down. And while you're at the bottom, again, enjoy it because there are certain rewards down there too and know that you will only be able to go back up. Now, why am I talking about fortune's wheel? Because knowing this and anticipating this will give you a level of stoicism that will bring immense peace to your life. But do not abuse that peace. You don't want to be a hippie and sit there and let the years go by. Use that newfound stoicism and be bold. Because remember, fortune favors the bold. And I invite everyone to take a minute and examine moments in their life when they were the most bold. Typically, what is the demographic that experiences the most fortune or most luck? And you hear this all the time. It's the young people, the young. Why? Because young people, they don't have a fully developed prefrontal cortex. They're much more impulsive. And while I'm not celebrating that in and of itself, that is the instinct, the ability to tap into action and take bold, massive action. That is one of fortune's favorite qualities and she rewards you for it heavily. It is moments of inaction, of idleness that leads to a lot of pain because you're not actively creating. So let's look into the psychology of creation and taking massive actual action. 
As I mentioned, we're going to take a look into the act of creating, of creation, and creating is going to be one of the most powerful acts you will take on as a human, whether it's creating a life and a family or creating a new business or just making something out of nothing. This is one of the most fundamental parts of being human, and I believe it's no coincidence that in the book of Genesis, we get a really good idea of what it looks like to create and how rewarding it is in and of itself. But more importantly, in Genesis, we learn that it is much easier to destroy than it is to create. And in that truth, that means that creation takes effort. And with effort comes deep fulfillment. So we feel deep fulfillment when we step into our creator self. Now, in 2021, I attended all of Tony Robbins' events, Unleash the Power Within, Date with Destiny, life and wealth mastery, business mastery, everything, right? And I was blessed enough to speak with him virtually in front of thousands of people at the Date with Destiny event in 2021. And so when we got to talking, he made me do this one exercise, which we're about to do together right now, which is extremely powerful. It's known as the Porsche Swing exercise. So what I'll have you do is close your eyes for a moment and picture yourself at 80 years old. Maybe you have someone in your life that's around 80 years old, but I want you to think about you, okay? I want you to divorce yourself from any previous expectations what 80 years old looks like and just extend yourself right now and the decisions you've been taking right now and carry it with you until you reach 80 years old. If you continue to do what you've been doing right now, what are you going to look like at 80? You're in the porch ring in the front of your house, just you and your partner. Maybe your partner's not there. Maybe you live alone. Maybe you decided not to have children, whatever it is. The whole point of this exercise is for you to really sit with the fact that time is going to go by whether you do anything or not. And hopefully, God willing, you reach 80 years old. What are the decisions you're doing right now? You're on your porch swing. Who comes to visit you? Does anyone come to visit you? Do you have kids? Do you have grandkids? Do you have friends? Does your community care about you? Do you have a partner that cares about you? Do you care about your partner? Have you built anything, a business, a family? Now, this might seem like a silly exercise for you, but I'm 27 right now. And I remember the day I turned 17. That was 10 years ago. That did not feel like 10 years ago. Decades go flying, guys. Now, we don't have to guess because they've asked tons of elderly people people on their deathbeds about their regrets and the most common regret in the world are regrets of inaction rather than of action. So if you're having doubts and you're scared to extend yourself, stretch yourself to your limits to grow, to talk to that girl, to start that new business, to enroll in that course, to take that trip, it's really dumb to not go for it. It's better to waste money than to waste time because at least you can learn why wasting money and correct it with the time you have left than to try to win back time because that's impossible. So I genuinely hope and I pray for everyone listening to this that when you reach 80 years old, God willing, and you're on that porch swing, that your heart is full because you took the action you wanted to take and more importantly that you needed to take. We each have a mission and in the coming modules, we're going to discover what that mission is and you're going to go for it. So let's discuss Tim Ferriss, 4-Hour Work Week. So this book came out in the 2000s and it really, and it probably single-handedly led to the boom in digital nomads. A lot of people like busy work, feeling busy, but they're not actually putting in productive, valuable creation time in. But as we discussed, once you start actually being creative and being productive, a four hour work week is very much possible and you can make tons of money on very intense dashes of work than pretending like you're actually working 40 hours a week on something that doesn't mean anything. So in the spirit of being productive and doing things that actually matters, Tim Ferriss has a system known as dreamlining that we're going to do that takes these abstract goals that you have in your life and it condenses it into a three-step system known as dreamlining. I've been dreamlining my goals every six months since 2019. And this exercise right here has given me more return on investment than any other exercise highlighted in 4-Hour Workweek. And I and I know you're going to get the most out of it too. So I suggest you break down your goals into more immediate goals. What tends to happen and what I see happen is when people start planning for excess time in the future, the urgency gets lost. The hunger is not immediate. So breaking down into more immediate goals, 
quarterly goals and six month goals, I believe is the best way to go. So let's look at it. Okay. So in the book, Tim Ferriss provides this hyperlink to this document. This is the dreamlining document. So let's do your quarterly goals real quick. So in three months, I dream of, and real quick, all your goals are going to be broken into three categories, into havings, beings, and doings. Then we're going to break down the cost. You'll see how achievable your far-fetched goals actually are. You'll sum up your cost. And then this is the most important. You Each of these goals will have steps you will do right now, steps you'll do tomorrow, and steps you'll do the day after that. So let's look at example right here. This is going to be part of your homework, by the way. So this document is going to be hyperlinked into your homework. So each of you will need to do this. So let's look at Tim Ferriss's example. So in six months, he would like to have a personal assistant. How much is that going to cost him? At five bucks an hour for 80 hours a month. That's going to cost him around $400 a month. Okay. And things he would like to be, these don't have any costs. Be fluent in Greek. We'll have to have 15 minute conversations with natives. One of his goals in the doing category is to visit the Croatian coast. Now the cost for that is going to be a 514 round trip airfare plus a $420 rent. So you can sum up the real costs here. A plus B plus C. You break down your target monthly income with these expenses you've just calculated. And then this is the key part here, the steps now. So something you can do right now to get that personal assistant would be to post bullet point job descriptions on three major sites. And in the Croatian coast goal, he would visit virtual tourists and determine the best season and, and the top five things to do. Something you can do tomorrow would be assign a one to two hour task to the top three applicants. And then in Croatia, you can research tickets and housing. Then the day after that, he can choose the top applicant and have them work 20 hours per week, see how it goes. And then he can reserve the tickets he's found. So these far-fetched goals, going to Croatia and hiring a personal assistant, he's actually taken three steps, very key, crucial steps, immediate steps towards the realization of those goals. So systemizing this is going to make your dreams an actual reality. There is no choice. You are giving your dreams zero choice but to be realized. They have no choice. That's what a system does. So with this mind module and the following two other ones, we're going to chip away at the marble of your mind. You're going to, you're going to end up with an iron mind. And with the example of fortune's wheel fresh in your mind, you will develop a sense of adaptability through life. You know that things will come, things will go, and you will not be phased by it. But also you'll be working on your awareness, the stillness with that porch swing exercise. You will be very aware of the time slipping by and how deeply precious each day is, but also now we're going to discuss the confidence aspect that really ties in your cognitive flexibility. Now, how do you build confidence? You build confidence by continually living in accordance with your mission by stacking evidence, undeniable evidence as proof that you are who you say you are. Everyone who lies, they are deeply insecure because they know they don't have anything, any living proof that they are who they say they are. This is why disciplined people are the most confident people out there because discipline doesn't care about your motivation. When you show up consistently and you put in the work and you take votes with your actions every single day, you're going to be one of the most mentally resistant people on the planet because you know you are who you say you are. You've developed the confidence, the cognitive confidence that A, you will show up and B, that you've done this before and C, that no one can tell you otherwise. No one can knock you down a peg. So these three things, the confidence, the awareness, and the adaptability is going to give you the cognitive flexibility you need to not only handle more wins, but to get more and get rewarded by life with more wins. I wanted to start with winning because of this reason, because once you develop this one personality trait, this one mental trait, you will stand out. I recently did an event in Lisbon, Portugal, and I was in an Airbnb with millionaires. One guy made $560,000 that month. And living with these guys for five days, I saw their cognitive flexibility at work. So I remember this one time we were leaving the Airbnb and we had to get to the event where we had a special guest speaker who worked close hand with Andrew Tate. Actually, he was speaking and we had ordered an Uber to get to the event, but the Uber canceled on us last minute. We got another one, another one canceled, another one canceled. We decided to walk a little bit further. We finally got an Uber and it dropped us off at the wrong place. And the guest speaker was about to start speaking, right? None of these millionaire guys complained. Like none of them complained. I know many people in my personal life who, when I've been in a similar situation and a logistical hiccup happens like this, a lot of people freak out. They start cursing. They bring negative. They complain. None of these guys complained. We all took action. I said, all right, let me order this Uber from here. 
And then the other guy ordered another Uber from his phone. We were like, all right, whoever gets here first, we'll cancel the other one, whatever. We started taking action. Others suggested to start walking because it was a little bit over a mile away. We immediately got into taking action because why? We were adapting. We were adaptable. We had the confidence we would get there, that everything would be fine. And we were aware of our situation, right? We don't complain. I want you, I want you to get that close to your mind. Successful people do not complain. And the other thing you'll notice is how financially, mentally, physically, socially, emotionally, spiritually healthy people talk about their abilities and what's possible. They all have incredible cognitive flexibility and you will too. So let's discuss the laws of nature. Understanding these natural laws will help you position yourself to maximize the return on your efforts. There are 12 laws of nature. You may have heard the phrase, this is a natural law. This is a law of nature, but maybe you've not seen all of them together like this. But in these next few slides, you will learn what natural laws really are and how you can use them to win at life. So these are the 12 natural laws of nature. The first is the law of vibration. Then we have the law of attraction, the law of divine oneness, the law of compensation, the law of polarity, the law of correspondence, the law of inspired action, the law of cause and effect, the law of relativity, the law of gender, the law of perpetual transmutation of energy, and the law of rhythm. Now, while all 12 natural laws merit exploration, we will uncover three of these laws because these are the ones that produced the most return on investment in my recent life. By understanding these three laws, Hopefully you will come to respect them, but most importantly, recognize them in action so that you can tap into their inherent power and leverage them. These three laws are the law of compensation, the law of correspondence, and the law of rhythm. So the law of compensation states that we will be compensated in proportion to the amount of effort we put in and the value we provide to others. You reap what you sow. To make the most of this law, if you want more, you need to give more. So do more than what you're asked for. Always go the extra mile. But it's also key to practice gratitude for what you have already. And when you owe something, pay it without reservations. The law of correspondence states that your outer world is a reflection of your inner world, and it corresponds with your dominant patterns of thinking. An optimist sees opportunity everywhere. A pessimist sees risk everywhere. It's the exact same stimulus, but it translates into completely different outcomes. You will move through the world differently. You will literally live in a different reality to other people. I know it sounds crazy, but it's so true. Successful people just simply don't complain. They operate with a different software. That's why we start with mindset. To make the most of this law, notice your thought patterns and speech. Remember, to change your outer world, you must first change your inner world. Transform undesirable thoughts. Imagine if you had a roommate in your life that was just constantly spewing negativity. Oh, you're never going to get that job. You can't do this. You suck. You wouldn't tolerate that. You'd say, hey, get the fuck out of my house. I don't want you to talk to me like that. Who do you think you are? Get out of there. But how many of us speak negatively to ourselves like this? You got to stop. You got to interrupt these patterns and knock it off. You got to keep pushing yourself, but you cannot wallow in self-pity. You cannot live in negativity and you cannot have a heart of hate. Because if you have that inside, then your whole outer world will reflect the same. Misery loves company. Cut off ties with losers and pessimists and negative people. Theirs is a thirst that never quenches. The law of rhythm states that everything in this universe happens for a reason and it occurs only at the right time. The universe works like a pendulum. Everything has a pattern and moves through cycles. Everything's seasonal. This is also known as the law of perpetual motion. If it swings to the left, it has to swing to the right. How to make the most of this law? Recognize that life will always have ups and downs, like the Rota Fortune, but you should accept both equally well. Receive without pride and let go without attachment. By adopting the stoic composure in your life, you are going to have the peace that many don't. Your happiness and peace of mind cannot be based on external factors. To save you time, I want you all to have these 12 laws because they're absolutely foundational to getting lucky in this life. You will be an alchemist of life and life circumstances. So here are the 12 laws right here. Take a screenshot if you like. These are the first six and these are the latter six. Now let's discuss your homework for this module. So as always, create a copy of this document. You're going to choose one of the laws of nature and define specific steps you will take to make the most of that law in your life.
I also want you to click on this link that will take you to Tim Ferriss's Dreamlining Worksheet. And I want you to write down your goals, break them down from your quarterly goals, six month goals, and more immediate goals. So you can identify those three steps you can do for each of those goals. Something you can do now, the next day, and the day after that for each of them. I don't care if there's six month goals. There are things you can do today, tomorrow, and the next day in the pursuit of those goals. And don't forget your accountability partner and your fellow Academy members are all working together to create accountability. So you need to post your homework to the Discord. And here's an example of what that could look like. Hey guys, I've decided to put an end to my negative mindset. Starting today, I'm going to leverage the law of relativity to my advantage and reframe everything that happens to me into happening for me. To further commit my mind to this, I will openly smile in the face of adversity because I know it's shaping me into who I'm supposed to become. You being here is a great step in the right direction. Do your homework, complete this assignment, and the following modules are only going to be soaked in deeper into your bones and your psyche, and you will have no choice but to succeed. See you guys in the next one, Plus Ultra.